You're not kidding. I'll turn the other way. This thing's got parlor, parlor chairs and stuff under here. Watch, the railing is gone. Oh no, it isn't down here. I don't know if you're going to see that far. Oh, I guess we will. Deluxe. Deluxe is real low. From this perspective, it has a completely different appearance. You're not kidding. I don't know if I'm catching everything, even though I got the a real low lux. Shooting from the projection boo boy, this is really up here. Still up in the balcony. <laughs> the balcony. Looks like all marble, huh? Yeah. You'll see. Wait the... a while. Start over again. I mustn't have hit the button while I was throwing my finger in there. Okay, just say go. I'm go ahead. We're at the box. Okay. Along the American Theater slope floor, where there was seating capacity for over 2,000 seats. To your immediate right are three box seat theaters in a gradient pattern. The highest level represents that of Old Man Kehoe. That strictly was his box seat reservation seating arrangements, and no one else was allowed to sit there. Continuing up the columns of the Roman Gothic architecture, the ornate plaster, and the dome above the box seat theaters, it's absolutely magnificent and can never be replicated without it running into millions of dollars to restore the theater to its former glory. Continuing above there, you'll notice along the roof is the, is the hand painting of the American theater. A superscript T, right there, Al. Where? A superscript T. Oh, you can't even... And there's the sunburst effect, representing uh, the Gothic, the sun with the sun's rays, oh, and the cherubs. This all could be cleaned with the chemical that would bring back the luster of the, of the painting. Over here is another cherub. Okay, right more. There it is. Oh, I can't. And then continuing on. I got to back up. Continuing on, rotating. Okay. All right, I'm going around it. Yeah. The dome is the central theme of the American theater. It rests 102 feet up in the air. And around it is the circumferential pattern of the Roman Gothic plaster, ornate plaster. 
This is what controls the balance of the uh, the balance of the the ropes ver on the drop screens in back here. Take an angle shot, Al. There's a screen, and notice the height: 130 feet up in the air. Oh, I can't. Absolutely magnificent. I can't even see that. Okay. I think it's too far, Go too ahead. dark. What if I did this for you? This should help us in action. Oh, let it go, Paul. We're now on the stage taking a look as if you were a person on the stage looking out to the audience of an empty seating capacity of 900 on the first floor, 350 people on the balcony level, and another 225 people on the third level, the mezzanine level. And way up atop those little square blocks are the projection booths. And that's where the movies were shown and the lighting arrangements were performed for on-stage theater shows. Did you, get a, did you get a shot of the marble steps? Yeah. Okay. The sprinkler system, too. You get a shot walking down the steps, if you could, and the sprinkler system. Tell me when to go. Go ahead, I'm going. Okay, we're now in the basement below the stage level. These are the uh, coal furnaces, they're cast iron. Look at the magnificent arrangement of piping and valves. Over to your left is the water sprinkler system that served for water protection to the entire facility. Uh, all sorts of control and test valves that distribute water to all levels of the American theater in case of fire. Uh, tell me when to go. I'm gone. The American theater has a length on it of 144 feet in length. These pipes run underneath the stage below the basement. Circling all the air conditioning system. There are two carrier units. Are, it's, are the air conditioning motors that distributed the, the air conditioning cold water through the system up to the roof and down throughout the, the building. These massive motors are irreplaceable. And there are copper and brass fittings throughout. The uh, dressing rooms. This is a typical standard dressing room below street level, measuring about 10 foot by 12 foot wide. There are approximately eight of them. There's a couch in there, uh, symbolic of the days of 1923. Just... Now we're on the left side of the American Theater, going the whole length with the drainage pipes. And this walkway, cat walkway, is approximately uh, 20 feet below the Earth's surface. Okay. Well, you could even stand right here, Al, and get an angle shot of the curve of the balcony. I can't see nothing, Paul. You want the scope in. Uh -huh. I think it's just too... Al, stand where I'm at. Flagging up, or it's just... It's because yeah. the light is. Go right up to the projection booth. Oh yeah, when I get in close like this, I can see everything good. Okay, come on up the uh, steps now. All set. Let me know when you got it on. It's on. We are now on the third level above this outdoor sign, the overhang in the American Theater, facing Main Street. If you notice at the angle, you have your structural beams going at a 45 degree angle. So there's no rental tenant space. It's a um, pseudo area where it was designed to provide a canopy beam overhang. These are your glass plated windows facing Main Street. Okay, you're looking at the uh, side of the former Nathan building, which has a Coca-Cola sign, which is currently the office of uh, Dr. Paul Cromie, who owns it and did the renovation. Right now we are on the uh, above Main Street on the second level of the American Theater. The building is 110 feet long, 
All these rooms were the former offices of Dr. Test, the physician, the ballet dance studio, uh, in Pittston Ballet Dance Studio, David Blight, and a dentist's office. And the podiatrist, Dr. Gilb, was up here many years ago. This is now all vacated rooms, approximately 3,000 square feet. Most logically, it should have been where the Chamber of Commerce would be, rather than taking up prime real estate in downtown Pittston and not paying taxes on it. These are the steps leading from Main Street all the way up here. This is the only access to Main Street. There's the American Theater signs from the marquee. We were struggling to remove them. Watch the floor. They all spell out American Theater made of tin and electrical wiring with bulbs. And you're going to give them to Alma Hollick? And we are going to give them to Dr. Cromie to sell to Alma Hollick. Floor is no good, buddy. Now, huh. never say give away. <laughs> I didn't see that. Man. Ooh, let's go. Yep. Okay. I told you this floor is no good up here. Ah, it's a good floor. <laughs> but anyway, let me put for the record hey. give down Mahalik. Paul. You ready for it? Paul, just for the hell of it. Check, check this full straight. <laughs> beautiful landing. It was beautiful. I thought I was Just small. watch your language. You're talking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're looking at Pittston entering it ass backwards on Kennedy Boulevard. Where the first mistake in 1959 was with the city. I'm going over West Pittston for a minute. We're on West Pittston, the site of glorious families and people. Okay. Coming around. Yeah, the Coxton, Coxton Bridge way down there yeah, I'm... by the Camel's Ledge. I got that in there. You got the uh, cement bridge, what do you call this bridge? Jenkins, Fort Jenkins. And, uh... Coming around. Shit. Okay, over there. Start over here at the uh, Water Street Bridge, where it used to be a $5 fine if you walked or drove your carriage faster than the pedestrian walking. Kennedy Boulevard continuing down the Boulevard Beverage. That's the west side of West Pittston over there. There's my house all the way down there. Oh, I was just going to say, nobody good lives on that side. Uh, oh, focus okay, in. I'm, I'm changing my up. mind now. Over here you have nothing but garbage in Pittston. I'm sorry, Pittston. Yeah, we're at the oldest church in Pittston right now. Yep, that little one there. The first. There's Mark Data all the way down there. There's Pizza Hut and Super Saver. Oh, we'll home right in on those suckers. Now you got the Dime Bank building. And you got the Northeastern building. Coming around. Coming around the Main Street now, Pittston. Oh, and for insurance purposes, take my new roof on my two buildings, the Krodick and the, Na and the, and the uh, Dr. Cromie's office. Look at that brand new roof and the Northern skylight right there in the studio on the second floor. Hey Paul, you think I can put this little thing into the bed of the pickup truck that's down there? No, no, no. I, I. <laughs> Continuing on to your left are the Church of St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. That's in case you want to look through. There's an overhang ledge that measures about uh, oh, I give that 20. 24, 25 yeah. inches. And there are your buildings that are going to come down. The Wallman Building, the, the Beauty School, City Carpet and these video are going to be demolished. The city's grant on the east side of Main Street for $250,000. Wait a minute, I'm going downtown. got a shot of the Wallman building on down. These four buildings are sister buildings, all connected. They're going to be demolished oh, God. by the Redevelopment Authority. Get the They're pick. all three-story structures. Over to your left was the former, uh, was it, uh, the building was, uh, you can't have the letter B. The roof 
and down into a 14-foot walkway where the air conditioning units and ducts are. Over to your left are all the central air conditioning units, one on the left and one equally on the right. Here is the electrical panel that governed the electrical wiring to the units. And currently these are the ducts that distribute the airflow throughout the building, the galvanized ducts. There are two. The subducts or the additional lines are right here. Look at the intricate level of duct work. And the steel beams, the cross hatching of beams and the So well, this is where me and Tom was measuring right. everything. Right, we knocked out the drywall here. Now, come on, I have a walkway for you. This is the structural beams with the 2 by 10s and the base roof substrate. And this is the, the galvanized ductwork as it shoots off from the main... On it already. <laughs> <laughs> now, you want to see, where's the beams that had the electrical people's date on it and their names? A set of intricate structural beams and cross beams that support the roof and the dome, plaster dome. This is where there was a lay down of four inch copper pipes coming off of the air conditioning units that were pirated from a group of people that came here and put a wiring system and took a power saw and cut away $40,000 worth of copper pipes, four inches thick. And they missled them through the roof down to the floor. The sh what you're looking at is the asbestos insulation in those days for the four inch copper pipes which came off the air conditioning uh, system. And this was cut and split off and then cut with a reciprocating saw to rip out the copper. Get out of that hole already. This is the only access from the tar mule hide rubber roof to reach the air conditioning system here at the American Theater which measures 110 feet wide by 144 feet long. Oh, records, historic records I can go to to retrieve the origin other than by interviews with people. And in interviewing several dozen people, it appears as though the American Theater was built in 1918 and completed in 1921, a three-year construction project. Prior to being the American Theater, it seemed to be some sort of a hotel on this same site. American Theater uh, took three years of construction and had uh, solid marble, two and a half inches thick installation for steps and walkways, ornate plaster, Roman Gothic theme of architecture and hand paintings with canvas murals. The drop screens and stage droppings were approximately 56 feet wide by 24 feet long. Currently appraised at today's value of $30,000 a piece. There are quite a few lying here, up to 30 within the building. It had stained glass windows and oak, all which were taken out by uh, antique people. The seating capacity was 2,000 at that time, which by today's standards might meet up to 24 to 2600 seating capacity by today's new regulations. It is larger than the Kirby and Wilkesbury, and perhaps with Pittston being the heart of Wyoming Valley and the three bridges that funnel into here as the arteries feeding into the heart, and four miles from the airport, perhaps the American Theater lost its time and should have been where the Kirby is today, thereby serving both Wilkesbury and Scranton or Loser and Lackawanna counties equally. I think they all missed the boat when they gave up on the American Theater. The ductwork distribution, here it is with the ornate plaster on it with the air vents running along the length or the width of the American Theater, 110 feet with its airflow ventilation. Get a shot going down the mezzanine level. We are now on the mezzanine level looking down the balcony with the runway. I don't know if we're going to pick up too good. You picked it up. That's good. Okay, what happened here is this is the left side of the three box seat theaters that were ripped down under our demolition phase to bring everything equal to the wall for the public bus terminal. Unfortunately, the men did it without supervision and thereby irreversibly destroyed the box seat theaters when perhaps it should not have been necessary.
Yeah. Oh, you want me to narrate? Go ahead. You see where my light's going, wherever I'm going. Where is it? It's, it's telling me I need more light. Oh, okay. How's that? No, that way, up there. Yeah. Well, this is the last episode or chapter in the American theater. Built in 1918, completed in 1921. The ornate plaster still typifies that of the Roman Gothic architecture and the design back in the 1920s. The concentric circle is approximately 92 feet in height. The box seat theaters represent only the most elite that would sit there most notably the old man Kehoe, the coal king. The balcony rises next to the level of the mezzanine up towards the projection booth where all of the films were presented, a silent and sound stage. Eventually Broadway came here in the 20s and 30s. The seating capacity is approximately 2,000 seating capacity, including the first floor, balcony, and mezzanine. In those days, for live stage productions. The stage itself has dressing rooms in the basement, as well as back here. Above us is the overall screen of the stage. The flywheel is way above, approximately 110 feet in height. There's over 35 tapestries and curtains. We're all orchestrated amongst the flywheel and walkway above the stage. Against the ropes and the stage weights. The ladder rises approximately 130 feet in height to where the stage hands would get together and rise and fall in curtains. The ornate marble steps truly represents Wait. the marble steps represent the north and south entrances from the first floor to the second floor balcony. They are originally from Italy you can tell the Italian light marble with the light gray veins. They're approximately two inches thick, 13 inches wide, and nine feet long. The banisters represent ornate gypsum. Each, each step weighs 200 pounds laid on concrete. These sections were removed and that's how they were pre-constructed. This is out of the lobby. Up there. Now we're in the main street, off main street in the main lobby. Tickets were once purchased. There was plenty of oak, wood, and stained glass. Rectangular stained glass is above the doors. The safe represents Alan Donald Pollock's portions. <laughs> Below us are the basements, 3,500 square feet. On each side of us are retail stores, 800 square feet on each side.
beginning of the end. The balcony. Stage.